Hello, uh, welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. Um, uh, my name is Jay, and uh, today I wanted to share with you uh, a new tool that I've been playing around with today and, and kind of walk you through the, the journey of, of what I've learned. Uh, the tool that we're going to be talking about today is called Crescendo. Um, this blog post from uh, Jason Helmick uh, came out a few days ago, or at least came across my fee uh, feed a few days ago. And uh, as I read over it, I was just amazed and excited about this tool. Even though it's in it's in preview one, of course, you know there's there's a lot of work to be done to it. But I was really really pleased with what I've done today. Um, basically, what this tool is doing is it's it's taking PowerShell and wrapping it wrapping it around all your other tools. I think in in this uh, blog, blog article, he talks about wrapping up uh, Docker and Kubernetes uh, and things like that. And there are some examples that he gives you with this tool. Um, but with that being said, uh, what we're going to do, uh, what I did earlier today, is I took, I was on my Mac and I took TCP dump and I wrapped it up inside PowerShell. So then I had that verb. Um, verb noun syntax to run my TCP dump and I had typical command line parameters versus the one letter uh, switches or whatever you want to call them in uh, in Linux or Mac mm -hmm. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with the the whole Linux type theme instead of doing it on Windows uh, so what I've actually got built uh, off to the side here is I have a CentOS 8 uh, virtual machine that I'll be using. We're not going to be using it through VMware. I have actually already have a uh, SSH connection established to it. So we're going to just kind of use SSH into that virtual machine. And we are going to do what I call PowerShellize TCP dump. So if you read through the blog article, uh, the first thing it has you do is it wants you to um, uh, uh, it, you got you have to install the module, right? And if we if we all remember uh, to find the modules, we always do find module module, and we want to do uh, star. Makes me. Reminds me of the little Einsteins when my kids were younger. Oh, by the way, a prerequisite for this is I already have uh, PowerShell installed. Um, in fact, that's the error message I got. So we're just going to... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and start that thing now. And we're going to run it as a... Um, as a normal user, we're not going to do sudo just yet. Um, we'll do that when we actually start running TCP dump. Um, and I am running uh, version 7.1, where this tool actually requires you, if you want to build a module with this tool, you have to be running uh, version 7. You can have, uh, according to their documentation, you can have version 5 to run the PowerShell module that will be produced out of the tool. So, but I already have Windows 7 on all my stuff. Uh, or not Windows 7. I have PowerShell 7.1 on all my stuff. Thinking about jumping over to that uh, 7.2 uh, preview, um, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, find module. right that's what we're looking for um, and if you've ever gone back and you've watched my uh, PowerShell crash course you know I don't have any other repositories uh, installed here the only one I have is the PS gallery on this virtual machine and so it did find it so now let's do a Let's go ahead and do that. Yes. Let's 
half screen so that way you guys don't get cut off. All right. All right. So now that we've got it installed, now of course, um, so let's, let's look at the different commands that come with it. And anything with Chris is what we want to do. So when reading through the, the blog post and the help file, which we'll kind of look at here in a minute, uh, right now we have this new crescendo command. This, to my understanding, is what is supposed to build your, your JSON file that is going to be like your answer key whenever you build your module essentially um, however uh, whenever I did whenever I played around with that earlier I was not able to find that JSON file I'm not 100% sure where it went but I'll show you how I kind of worked around it and, and did some other things and then uh, once you have that JSON module built you'll use the uh, export crescendo module and that's what's going to build your PSM1 file that you're going to turn around and import into your uh, PowerShell session. Let's play around with this uh, new crescendo command. Uh, let's do uh, actually let's do uh, get help. So there's not much help um, built in just yet. According to the blog post, they're going to add more. Uh, but it gives you examples in here of how you would build it. So this is that JSON file, or this is your, yeah, this is the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is your JSON file that your uh, export command, that, that you're actually going to modify and build and then export into your PS uh, one mod or yeah PSM one mod uh, file, right? Um, unfor it, it gives you a good description of what what this thing does. It does not really give you kind of uh, that step by step. Hey, this is what you do. This is what you do. Step one, step two, or anything like that. So the first thing I did course as I did uh, uh, I did the new crescendo command right and then I did the uh, and then I looked at see what all the parameters were that I have well I have verb noun and then all the rest of them are just your your basics so your common parameters right so whenever I looked at documentation um, new crescendo command has a mandatory, both the verb and the noun are mandatory. So we do verb, and we're going to do uh, get noun. We're going to do, uh, we could call it anything we want. I'm going to do, I'm going to call it a IP packets. Um, and let's just go ahead and call it like that just to keep everything neat and tidy so when you do this you do get some output to the screen but I don't know where that that uh, that JSON file is um, hopefully one of you guys can find it uh, maybe post some notes on where it is put but if I do uh, uh, ls tag la it's not here Let's see um, and then whenever I went searching around and, and looking, I did find that the crescent, um, there's a lot of stuff in this location. If you go to your uh, home directory into the dot local share, there's where your PowerShell modules, your crescendo one is, right? So, if we do uh, CD into there, we do a ls la. 
can see it's, it's not in here either. Um, we do have some samples. Uh, I believe those are the samples. If we go in there, those are samples of uh, what they provided us to go off of. read through the documentation they actually talk about uh, the IF config um, file uh, they kind of use that one as the example in the uh, in the blog but so I could find where that was um, I don't know if that's by design right now or if they're gonna add that in later so what I did is I just did I did a copy of the IF config, and then uh, I copied it to forward slash. Remember, we're going to call ours uh, packages. Now, if we do a we should have IP packets and we actually have to put this crescendo.json on there as well so let's go ahead and rename that JSON. All right. So now we have our IP packets. One right there. Um, let's see. So other than that, the next thing, uh, we just kind of edit that. So what I did is I went back and I edited the uh, IP packets one. So VI. here we go so when we when we go through here this is the schema we're using we're going to be using the uh, crescendo schema our verb remember we tried to build it on the command line never could figure out where that file was so our verb is actually going to be So on my normal machine, I do use VS Code, so this is much, much easier. Um, but we're going to work with what we have. Uh, and then we called it IP packets. And we can give it any description we want. Um, let's call it. for TCP and the actual so here under the original name this is where we actually put the uh, file path of where the tool is that we're going to use which I believe it was uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong user TCP bump. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and write and quit that. And then let's just do a uh, which TCP dump. Here we go. I right, user SBIN. So let's go ahead and copy that. So now let's go ahead and re edit that thing. Let's take this. Here we are. Here. Uh, usage. The synopsis is okay. So let's do. Uh, right. 
So here's where we can start adding in our parameters. So just for simplicity's sake, I just added in two par parameters. Um, the first parameter we're going to add in, let's go ahead and leave that as interface. If uh, memory serves me correct, we do attack I. So when we were on the command line, we would run TCP dump. We would run TCP dump, attack I, and then we would list our interface. So we'll do uh, attack I here is what the original uh, parameter was. The name of the, the original parameter. Uh, it is a string that we're going to have. Uh, default value. I don't even think we need that. Um, as a matter of fact, whenever I did it earlier, I didn't have a description or a default value, so I know we don't need that. Um, but we're going to say description uh, list the interface. Sounds good. It's going to remind me. Okay, so we did that. We're going to add a second parameter. So we're going to do a, a comma here. Uh, and then and we're going to do open bracket. Let's go ahead and enter that. And let's do a close bracket. And let's just enter that. And let's just start typing. So essentially we're going to do the same thing here. So let's just copy and paste that. All right? Because I'm a, I'm a bit lazy and I, uh, I don't mind. Uh, I don't want the extra headaches. So this one here we're going to call it a uh, file. And normally whenever you're running TCP dump and you want to read in a file, I believe it's normally tech R. And then here we're going to say uh, description is uh, the uh, file path to the path path. Is still going to be a string. Uh, one of the other uh, samples that I used earlier, the, uh, the parameter was actually a switch, um, but we're not using any of those. So that's done, that's done. There's the comma there. That's closed. All right, escape. Okay, that should have worked. Uh, let's just. Uh, just cat that thing, just in case. Yep, all of our stuff is there. It appears. Yep, I think we're good. So we're going to stay in this directory because everything else we do is actually going to be in this directory. I would, if I were to change anything of what we're about to do, I would actually move the module into one of our auto auto loading module locations and then you don't you would only have to import you wouldn't even have to import the module it would just automatically load whenever you opened up PowerShell but for this example we're just going to leave everything where it is so the next thing we would do is uh, I didn't write the instructions so what we want to do is the export the send up and if we look at the um, There we go. 
that's what I was looking for. So here's the other uh, variables for the export. So at this point, what we're doing is we're taking that JSON file that we just created, and we're going to ex we're going to export it, and it's actually going to this export crescendo module commandlet is going to convert that into a um, a PowerShell module that we can turn around and import. Uh, so before we do that, let's let's just take a look at this. If we do a ls tag la, you'll notice all we have is JSON files. So if we were to Endo module. Uh, what was that? Uh, we need the. Uh, so we're going to specify the configuration module, right? And the, remember, the configuration module we created was called IP packets. Now, if you if you actually look at this blog post, it was a little confusing whenever I was kind of reading through here. So we installed the module. We kind of looked at that. Uh, here's some additional uh, blog posts you can go read that kind of gives you the inner workings on what's actually going on in the background. Uh, so we did that. Uh, we did all that. This is one step that I'm going to work on later. We're not going to do this today. But essentially what you can do is once we've got it created, you can export and wouldn't, if we don't specify an output handler, uh, we're only going to get string uh, or text back. We're not getting actual full uh, uh, Of course, I'd have to draw a blink right now. Uh, objects. We're not getting full objects back, right? Um, and that's what the output handler is going to allow us to do. It's going to allow us to convert that string uh, into an object. Uh, later and here's actually some some examples on how they've done it um, all right and then here we are so we're exporting the credentials so if you look up here where they're actually building this thing they never really say that they called it uh, the dot get IP config so we don't have that listed if you remember correctly, uh, what we have listed in our example that they gave us was IP config. Actually, on Linux, it's IF config. So I'm wonder. I want. I haven't looked at it on a Windows machine yet. So I'm wondering if we get the get dash IP config on a Windows machine, and on the Linux version, we just have IF config. Anyway, regardless, I tried to do the dot get IP I was thinking maybe that had some special meaning that has no special meaning whatsoever um, as a matter of fact here you get a you get an error message uh, let's let's go ahead and take a look at that if I did uh, get, and then we also need the module name and I believe at this point just made up some um, some random module name. You can call it whatever you want at this point, I believe. Uh, let's just call it, I don't know, Bob's Burgers. Uh, Bob's Burgers. This is key, though. I mean, you have to have the PSM one. Um, I'm not worried about what this is called because it's going to error out anyway because we don't have a dot get IP packet. So I just want to show you what that error message looks like. Enter. Okay. Now we can enter. Here we go. So like it says, it can't resolve the path configuration file dot path. So the configuration file is this right here. That's what's filling this variable, right? So it cannot find this well it can't find it because it just like it says we never created it so let's do that so let's take all that out let's go ahead and just leave it as Bob's Burgers I'm kind of curious to see if we can call it whatever we want um, 
let's see. So in the example they give us, they do have it called IP config, uh, PSM1, which is, I don't know, that's kind of throwing me off. But we're going to call ours Bob's Burgers. Uh, so it already exists. So even though it threw an error message, it still created this Bob's Burgers. All right. LS, tech, LA. Most of you PowerShell guys are probably yelling at me saying, get child item. I get it. Um, but if we look at this module, we do uh, cat Bob's. There's nothing really in there. So let's just go ahead and remove. And let's just go ahead and rebuild it. So we're going to export IP package crescendo JSON into Bob's Burgers. So now we should have it. So there's Bob's Burgers. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, it's already put in our description for us. Um, so the parameter interface is going to list on the interface you wish to listen on. But I guess hindsight being what it is, I should have uh, labeled that some or put something else there. Anyway, the parameter file is the file to the path of the PCAP you wish to read in. And that's it. So now at this point, we, we still don't have uh, yet tech IP. Hit tab, you know, it's not auto tabbing. Um, it's because it's not imported yet. So we still have to uh, import module Bob's Burgers, right? It's so now that it imported. And this is where I said earlier, if I if I were gonna if I were to build this for real for my own personal use, I would actually probably move the module file um, to one of the to one of the auto load module directories, uh, depending on the OS system you're on. But now we should have uh, get tech uh, command right? packets. Oh, it auto it auto completed. And yeah, we we have it. It's coming from uh, you guys can't see me point like this, but we're getting it from Bob's Burgers module. We got a function. All right, so, uh, so now let's do this. Yep. But before we do that, um, I don't have any PCAPs. Uh, I can curl one, I guess. I'm going to pause the video for just a second just so I can uh, uh, download a, a PCAP. All right, and, and we're back. Um, so it didn't take me very long to get that, uh, but just kind of show you what I, I did um, to get a PCAP downloaded. Uh, I just went back into Bash. Um, uh, and then I just, uh, I, I just did a wget and I downloaded this PCAP. I have no idea what's in there. It was just the first one on the list that I got from Wireshark. And then I kind of moved it over to uh, the temp directory. And then I just made sure it was there. So that, that's pretty much all I did. Uh, let me go ahead and... So... So we should still have... Uh, get. We'll still have to, uh, because I closed out of PowerShell, that uh, that session closed, I have to re-import that module. So import module. So we 
So local share PowerShell modules, samples, and then it was, what do we call it, Bob's Burgers. Now we should have uh, get IP packet. Now remember, if we hit, if we do that and we hit tab. So there's all of our um, parameters. Of, of course, we've got the common parameters. Uh, and then we have the interface parameter that we created and the file parameter that we created. And those should correlate to interface should be tack, correlate to the TAC I and the file should correlate to uh, TAC R uh, if we were to do normal TCP dump. So let's do uh, TAC R. Or, no, I'm sorry. Let's do file and it's called temp and then fuzz was the PCAP. If we hit enter, we're reading. This is. I don't know if this is a function of TCP dump or or because TCP dumps being wrapped by PowerShell, but we have to give it a long while uh, before it actually starts reading it. Uh, as you can see, it it took a long while to read that in. Um, not 100% sure uh, why that was, but we used PowerShell to read in a PCAP, essentially, right? Uh, of course, we could go in and add more modules. I'd like to, at some point, add the, uh, I forget, I'd have to look it up, but the uh, the, the BP filter um, one, whatever, put that in there. And then, because I can never remember what it is, if I were to name a parameter BP filter, I can remember that. So I think that's what this tool is for, is for guys like me who can can't remember all the lint different Linux commands. But here's another thing. Um, I don't know, again, if it's a flaw or if there's something else I need to do. But whenever we do the interface, hang on, let me get my interfaces first. So this looks like my IP uh, for my Linux, for my uh, virtual machine. So we are in S33. All right, so we're going to get interface S33. And when we hit enter, it says we don't have permissions. And that's because we have to run PowerShell as in, uh, with sudo rights. So let's exit out. We're going to do sudo pwsh, right? And then we're going to type in our super secret vagrant password. I probably fat fingered it. Yep. That thing is, is it was staring me right in the face. But because we closed out, we have to import that. Um, module again. So I'm going to cheat, hopefully. Oh, goodness gracious. Enter. So now we can do get tech. Uh, packets uh, we're doing interface ENS 33 and it actually just sits here for a long while uh, when I was doing this on my Mac I sat I don't know, for a good five or ten minutes um, for whatever reason and whenever I ended up doing deciding well it's not working it's just hung up or whatever the case may be um, I hit control C and this is not the output I got last time. When I did this on my Mac, this did not show up. So this is nice. Um, we did capture 19 packets. Oh, uh, you know what? I wasn't doing anything on my machine. But regardless, it never showed to the screen. Uh, it, we did receive 19 packets. We didn't drop any. Um, and so here they are. So, so I don't know if there's an... 
another command I need to do to output it to the screen or, or, or what the deal is. But as you can see, that was really simple to just edit that JSON file and take all those um, Linux parameters or switches or arguments, whatever term you want to use, and turn them into PowerShell uh, uh, parameters, right? So that's that's interesting. And then if we go and we look at uh, the blog post again, let's see if I can pull that back up over here, right? So we, we're looking at this blog post, and as you can see in his example here on the output handlers, this is the next thing I'm going to be playing with. It it goes through this. And I just got to try and read through this and get a good understanding of what's happening. But I do know what's happening here. Here is the line where it's actually creating the, uh, the objects. So just imagine if we, could, if we could somehow write some code to turn this into an object. And then we have... Uh, we have a flags. We could we could do the uh, packet dot flags and just pull all the the flags out, or the uh, a packet dot destination, right? Instead of instead of having to go through all that said grep ah cut ninja command line kung fu stuff, packet dot destination, sort it, count it, done. Um, so the what we could do with this is just uh, it's just endless in my mind. I, I there's so much I want to do with it. I don't even know where to start. And even though it's preview, I'm enjoying it and kind of sad that it's not a full release yet. Um, so that's that's just kind of my take on on this new tool. I know there were some people in the blog that were kind of upset about it having to be in JSON and and needing to uh, worry about syntax and all that stuff. Uh, I just kind of seen right through that and and I just thought of the positive making just another way to make PowerShell more useful to me even when I'm not in a Windows environment. So that's kind of my take on the new tool. I'm excited, waiting for the full release. Um, please let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. I will also uh, link. I also post a link to the uh, to the blog post that uh, that prompted this this video. And uh, just let me know what you think. Uh, until my next video, I uh, hope you guys have a great day. And since it's the holidays, happy holidays, and we'll see you on the next one.